Good morning. Welcome to day two of chakras. Today we're doing the second chakra, the sensual one, the groovy one, the get your, you know, your booty moving one. Yeah, it's all about sensuality, creativity, um, the feeling of spontaneity, fluidity, grace. Um, this is the chakra of getting your groove on, right? The, the opposite side of it is if you feel guilt, if you feel confusion, if you feel blocked, that's a, when your second chakra is out of whack. Um, the color of this chakra is yellow. Um, it resides in halfway between your pubic bone and your navel, deep in your body. It's generally your pelvis and inner thighs. The physical organs that are associated with it are reproduction and elimination. So, you know, when you have, you have belly cramps during your period, that's your second chakra getting some exercise. Um, by the way, chakras are, are energy centers. They're in the energetic body, but they're also in the physical body. They tend to be nerve plexuses. What, what the ancient yogis identified as these things actually do correlate to something that, um, you know, a, a Western MD would be like, oh yeah, there's, there's a nerve plexus there. So they enervate all the organs of that area of the body. The sound is Lam. And Jackie and I are gonna try to chant in a way that doesn't wake the dead. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll take a few breaths and then we're gonna chant the sound of Lam three times, the same way we, we would chant Om. So take a breath in. While you're doing this, mm. Kind of move the vibration a little bit lower into your belly, see if you can move it down towards your uh, second chakra while you're here. Take a breath in and out. As the diaphragm moves down on the inhale, you can feel the second chakra moving and exhale. One more inhale, exhale. Hands come to heart center. Inhale. Long. Just spin over onto your back. Bring your knees up. We're just gonna open the low back, the back of the second chakra with some happy baby action. So um, just bring your knees in to begin. Bring your knees nice and wide. And maybe the soles of your feet are facing the ceiling. Maybe they're not, maybe they're just bent for now. And we're gonna and do a little happy baby series. So, so bring both knees in and take your right hand around your right knee and extend the left leg down the mat like you're coming into Apanasana. We'll just take a couple breaths here. And then let that right knee gradually fall out toward your shoulder and grab behind the knee or maybe extend the foot toward the ceiling and bind somewhere on your foot. So you can grab your foot or grab your big toe. You're gonna extend a little bit in that left leg. You got some work going on in your left quad so you don't fall over here. And let that knee just fall toward your shoulder. Taking a few breaths. So it's been intense to start off here. So if you want your left foot flat on the floor and then gently release. Take the left knee in, Apanasana to start. Just give your groin a chance to get used to the idea. And then when you're ready, let the knee fall out gradually toward the shoulder. You can grab behind the knee or the foot and extend it toward the ceiling. Half Apanasana, half happy baby rather. If you want to take a little rock side to side, releasing a little bit in your right quads and falling a little to the left and then rolling back, that might feel nice. 
couple of breaths, strengthen the right leg, and then gently bring the right leg up and take your full happy baby here. Feeling the back of your pelvis rooting into the floor. So we approach the chakras from both the front and the back. The back tends to be the will and the strength associated with this part of us. You know, how, how much will do you have to create? And the front of it tends to be the emotions associated with it. How do you feel about that power in your body to create or be spontaneous or dance or make love or whatever it is? And then gently releasing. And flipping yourself over. You can take a couple rock and rolls forward and back if you want. Coming into tabletop. Setting your knees under your hips and your palms under your shoulders. And we're going to start to take some pelvic tilts here. So just drop your tailbone down and then tilt it up. Keeping the rest of your spine as still as you can. We're going to keep the spine still and just move the pelvis. So tilting it up and then tilting it down. And then we'll add the lumbar spine. So keep your, your rib cage still and take your cat and cows from the back of your, the bottom of your rib cage down. So the lumbar spine is the part of your spine that's associated with the second chakra, right? It has more mobility typically than the rest of the spine, right? The, the element here is water, so it flows around. And then you can add the thoracic spine, add the rib cage to your cat and cows. Breathing as you like, we tend to exhale on the cat and inhale on the cow, but if you wanna mix that up, mix it up. And then you can add the head, the cervical spine if you like. And just noticing as you roll this wave through your spine where the mobility is. Right? Where does it feel like, you could use a little more articulation, where does it feel like it flows like water? Take in a couple more. And then when you're ready, come on back to neutral in your spine, curl your, your toes under and press back to downward facing. So having spent all that time yesterday on your root chakra, maybe just connect there and then trace the connection of that rootedness in your your perineum into that fluid center in your low belly. Maybe bend one knee and then the other. Wag your butt. This is the chakra of wagging your butt around. It's the, it's the twerking chakra. <laughs> That's in all the sacred texts. <laughs> it's very Sanskrit. <laughs> Yeah, and then which is more ancient? Right, right. I'm sure that they, they, they were twerking <laughs> in the ancient world. They just weren't calling it that. And then inhale your your right leg up. Take your three leg and then peel it open. Hmm. Three. Hmm. Your variations. Two. And on an exhale, sweep the foot forward to a low lunge. Maybe you'd like some blocks under your hands. It can be on fingertips. And just get a, little, get a little wiggly here. You can rock your hips forward and back a bit, side to side a bit. Make this fluid. Like take up space in it. Try all the little different wiggles and variations. Maybe coming back to the floor eventually. First chakra stabilizes you. Second chakra allows you to do those movements around. Hmm. And then let's take a nice twist, left hand roots, right arm reaches, can be up in the air, around behind you on your right hip. Three, two, and then just like water, you're going to drop that back heel down and sweep up to warrior two. Yep, falling over on the way is great. Coming up to a high lunge and then open, warrior two. Heel drops. Hmm. And again, making those little wiggles, maybe a little bit side to side on your hips, 
pressing into one foot a little more, pressing into the other foot a little more. Tip your tailbone under, drop it back. Move your ribs around above the second chakra. Just wiggle your way into the balanced aligned pose, whatever alignment means for you in your body. Hmm. Let's take four breaths here, pressing your feet away, feeling, feeling the shine in that spot, feeling that maybe you're pulling your belly in. You have 360 degrees of transverse abdominus all the way around yourself. You can feel that coming in towards center, burning, shining a little bit, being strong. And then on your next inhale, let's reverse this. Arm reaches up and back to any degree. Beautiful bind here in Jackie. My body would never in a million years make that, so do your thing. Maybe there's a strap. Three. My legs are burning. <laughs> I don't know how much chakra. <laughs> and then from here, we're gonna come into humble warrior. So turn your torso toward the front leg. And maybe your hands are gonna come down on either side of the front foot or you're gonna sweep them up behind you for a bind. I need to reposition that left foot a little wider on your mat. Hmm. So feel that mobility in your lumbar spine here. We worked it in cat and cow. You can wiggle your tailbone side to side here too. Point it in one direction, point it in the other. Curl it under, press it up. You have fluidity and mobility there. You have spontaneity and grace. You move from that second chakra power low in your torso. Couple more breaths. And then when you're ready, let's just step the left foot forward to a forward fold and hang here for a couple of breaths. Shake out your head. Hmm. And then when you're ready, step your right foot back to your low lunge. So blocks if you want them, getting your wiggles on. So fluidity Spontaneity is not limited to that part of your body, right? It might live for you in your shimmy, right? And the way you tilt your head and the way you move your hands. But you can also think of that second chakra as a place where it lives. Moving into your twist when you're ready, you can drop the back knee, right? Be creative, be spontaneous, be fluid. The left knee can come out to a lizard variation. Feeling the rootedness, the press down onto the floor, supporting whatever twist and opening is happening in your upper body. Three, two, and then beginning to unravel back to neutral and eventually fluidly making your way toward warrior two. Peeling yourself open. Got it this time. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to pause in the lunge, pause in the lunge. <laughs> Letting your roots settle. Feeling the opening across the front of your pelvis here. Knees moving away from each other, feet moving away from each other, palms moving away, making space for that expression in your body. Three. Two. And then when you're ready, inhale to reverse. Left arm reaches up, reaches back. Maybe you're reaching for a bind. Maybe you're looking up or looking back. And feeling the connection between your rootedness and this expression of grace and fluidity. Those two things help each other. They're deeply connected, all residing in your pelvis. Three. 87. <laughs> 87, 86, she doesn't want to leave yet. We're staying. All right, boy. 
And when you're ready, taking your time, coming to your humble. Hands can come down, repositioning the feet to a little bit wider on the mat side to side. Maybe a little shorter front to back. Wiggling, wiggling. Exploring that range of motion within your hips. Alignment, I'm coming to believe more and more, is an internal thing. You know, we're taught so much to line up bones or body parts or angles of things that we can see from the outside. And I want to just throw that in the bin now. Find your internal alignment. What's working for you? Maybe challenge yourself to have a bigger range there, but it's how does it feel? Hmm. A few more breaths, feeling your, the liquidity in your lumbar spine as you slowly step that right foot forward, forward fold. Keep saying a few more breaths and then making the transition <laughs> anyway. You guys do your own thing. I'm just here to suggest. So wiggle here. So actually, let's do this. Let's make a circle with your hips around your feet. So like a circle of weight moving in, in space around the perimeter of your feet, the way your weight is landing, the way it's connecting feet to hips feels so good in one direction, take it in the other direction. Back of your neck is long, your head is so freaking heavy. Tractioning your whole spine. And then when you're ready, coming back to center. Couple more breaths here. And on your inhale, slowly roll up to standing. All right, let's face the side of the mat and bring your feet wide. We're coming into goddess pose, which is also called horse. Different, so horse is when you have your hands on your thighs. Goddess is if you lift your arms up. So let's start in horse. If you want to rest your hands on your thighs, and notice that you can, this pose has a lot of variation in where you're pointing your feet. So Jackie's got a lot of out turnout, like she's a ballet dancer. When I do this because of my knees, I turn my feet mostly facing forward. Wherever your feet feel good, that your knees feel safe, you can tuck your tailbone underneath you, can rock a little bit side to side. So feel your abductors, your inner thighs are part of that second chakra. They're strengthening as they push your knees out. And if you want to lift your heart up a little more, hands at prayer palms, or maybe lifting your arms up into the full goddess expression. I sometimes do a Prometheus visualization here. You've got the whole world in your hands, the goddess that holds up the world, or maybe just your own creativity. Five, four, Three, as deep or as shallow into this bend of your knees as you like. Two, and then let's come up to standing. Point your toes forward. Maybe take a little tiny back bend here. Heart lifts, gaze lifts, and exhale to your prasarita. Nice, easy forward fold. Hands can be on your legs, classic. Alignment would be to have your fingertips on the imaginary line between your toe tips, but you can also grab your big toes. If it's better to have your hands out forward and take a, like a wide-legged downward dog variation, I've been loving that too. Hmm. So maybe reminding yourself the rootedness of the first chakra, the liquidity, the movement of the second chakra. Maybe there's a little bend into your knees. And we can bring this into a skandhasan, which is bending into one knee all the way to one side, and then all the way to the other side. So you can do this with your head way down toward the floor, or you can come a little more upright, like Jackie's doing here with her, her head lifting a little bit. This could be just a tiny little bend in each knee, right? I, my knees are not too happy about these deep flexes, so I, when I do this, it looks very different. So anywhere on the spectrum, that feels good. Your head can be lifted or down, but notice the groove here, right? Grooving one side to the other in your pelvis. And 
And then come back to your prasarita. Hands on the floor wherever you decide. Head is hanging. And just take a couple breaths in the stillness and rootedness of this pose. Alrighty. And then slowly come on up to standing. You can walk your feet a little closer together to heel your feet underneath you a bit more as you come up all the way to standing. Set up next for frog pose. So blocks, bolsters, whatever you need. You might want to roll the edges of your mat up to if you're on a hard floor, maybe you're on a, a carpet and that takes all the pressure out. You're going to come into a very wide-legged um, kneeling position. And whatever props you want underneath you, Jackie's got um, a block ready to take the weight of her pelvis, a bolster underneath there might be nice. Make sure that your shins are 90 degrees to your thighs and your feet are 90 degrees to your shins, right? You want it to be as squared off as you can. And as you come down into the pose, get your elbows on the floor. If you can find a variation where you don't need to rest on your elbows and you can have your arms extended, that might be nice. And this is a lot of challenge for those adductors, for your inner thighs, for the groins. As you start to soften into this pose, as you start to take some breaths and release your weight into the floor, See if you can walk your hips back, right? That's, that's dialing up the pose. You're challenging the tissues more as you move your hips back. If you're feeling like this is altogether too much, then move your hips forward, right? That's your release valve. And use your breath here. So let the each exhale be a mini release, a mini vacation to tell your body, tell your nervous system it's okay to fall into gravity, fall into the floor. Maybe come back to your first chakra, finding your rootedness, finding your groundedness, everything that's on the floor, your perineum, that root of your body. There's a lot of stability, a lot of security, and that allows this release, this liquidity, this fluidity in the second chakra. So maybe visualizing red and then yellow. Feel your capacities for stability and grace, for rooting and spontaneity. Sometimes just putting a spotlight on them is enough. Maybe the most important thing in this chakra work is understanding that whatever feels stuck in our bodies, we can move it, right? Something feels energetically stuck, you feel emotionally stuck. Keep it moving. Do yoga, go for a walk change up what you're looking at, change how you're thinking, keep it moving. All right, when you're ready, you're gonna come up onto your elbows, maybe press up onto your hands. You can flip your feet and come into a wide-legged downward dog or just take your props out and splat forward onto the floor like a pancake. Either way, coming out with so much spontaneity and fluidity and grace. <laughs> And come to seated. Sit on something. You can sit on the floor. You can sit on your couch. We are coming toward a little bit of pranayama and shavasana. So you can also sit on your knees. Whatever works. So Lam, once again, is the sound of the second chakra. If you want to visual, hear that in your head, visualize yellow. Hmm. Just start to bring some complete breathing, abdominal thoracic breathing. You're soft in your belly. You feel your belly and your lungs, hands wherever you're comfortable. And just visualize 
the red root center in your first chakra, your, your foundation, your groundedness, and stacked on top of that and stemming from it and giving back to it is that yellow center of your second chakra, the sacral chakra, your joy, your freedom of movement, your improvisation, your dancing down the street energy. And then you're welcome to stay here or if you want to take a more restful Shavasana to come to the floor and take a Supta Baddha Konasana variation. You can be flat on the floor or if you have blocks or a bolster, we're recommending a, a supported fish variation with a block underneath your shoulder blades and maybe one under your head as well. They can be at any height, well not the tallest height. They can be at either of the first two heights if you're using blocks. If you have a bolster, bring it way up to your sacrum. And then soles of your feet come to touch if that feels okay in your lower body. And letting your weight settle into the floor, arms where they wanna be taking up space. And if we're using that water visualization, if you're being water in your second chakra, think of it like a glass that's disturbed or a bowl of water that's disturbed and now the surface is slowly rocking towards stillness. What was roiled up is now coming to equilibrium to that mirror smooth surface. With so much balance and so much ease. Welcome to stay here as long as you like. Or when you're ready, maybe rolling over to one side, feet come flat to make your way towards seated. a breath in and a breath out hands to heart center breath in breath out thumbs to third eye breath in and breath out Thank you so much for joining us today for our second chakra practice, and we'll see you tomorrow for number three. Have a great day.